The second thing is, when the hell is Evan Mobley? We've been waiting on Evan Mobley to take that leap, like in the conversation with elite bigs. High expectations. Yeah. I'm talking about, you know, a guy that's 18, 20, and 10, at least flirting around the DeAndre Ayton type numbers. Oh, hold on. DeAndre Ayton's averaging 18 points, 10 rebounds, and two assists per game. And Mobley, despite limited offensive growth this year, is averaging 15, 9, and 3. And, of course, Mobley's calling card is his defense. Anyway, this came right after a loss in Utah, and our video coordinator, Mike De La Rosa, scouted this very game. So, I saw this clip of Perk the day after the Cavs game against the Jazz, and I was like, were we even watching the same game? After Jared Allen left the game early with food poisoning, Mobley was given the responsibility of being the lone big man to protect the paint against the fourth-ranked Utah Jazz offense. Not having Allen is actually a pretty big loss, as the Cavs' D is kind of predicated on having this Twin Tower setup. They can interchangeably rotate and help off the weak side to make that paint defense pretty lethal. But down the stretch in Utah, Mobley had a pretty ridiculous sequence showing why he's a defensive unicorn just on his own. On this play, he's guarding a non-shooter, so he's able to just roam off his man and force a difficult kickout. Then, on the ensuing attack, Mobley's able to use that length without fouling and get a good contest, but an unlucky bounce still allows the Jazz to score. The next possession down, Clarkson's forced into a tough shot, but rookie Walker Kessler tips it right to Markinen for an easy one but Mobley reacts quickly and deters the shot without fouling again. With the Jazz lead cut down to one, Markinen tries to take matters into his own hands. But Evans lurking on the weak side and says, get that weak stuff out of here. The Cavs though are unable to convert off the turnover and the lead stays at one. So Utah comes back and tries to get some offense going through Malik Beasley but Cleveland is in a drop coverage and Mitchell recovers and cuts off any advantage. Then on the second side, our guy Mobley is there once again to contest without fouling. And the Cavs get lucky that Walker Kessler misses a little bunny. The Cavs finally take the lead. And on the ensuing defensive trip, the Jazz try to put Garland and Mobley in a pick and roll. Mobley is near the level of the screen in sort of a high drop coverage. This allows him to contain Mike Conley's pull-up three-point shooting. So Conley's forced to hit Kessler on the pocket pass, but Mobley absorbs the bump from him and explodes for a massive rejection. There's barely any loading up time from Mobley. He's just off the ground in an instant after taking a shoulder from Kessler. But the Jazz aren't going away. Clarkson's able to create some space for a little mid-ranger. And on the rebound, the ball comes back to Walker Kessler who once again gets turned away at the summit by Mobley. The Jazz retain possession though, so they try to spam that Conley pick and roll again, but Mobley uses those Inspector Gadget arms and saves another layup by deflecting the pass out of bounds. Throughout the game, Jordan Clarkson was giving the Cavs fits with his pull-up shot making out of pick and roll. So, with the lead still at 5, Utah now tries the same empty corner pick and roll with Clarkson now, and Evan contains the ball well as Levert recovers, and they sort of use the baseline here as a third defender to cut the angle off. So the ball has to be kicked out, and the Cavs get a good contest on the shot. So even after a dominant defensive fourth quarter from Evan Mobley, the Jazz come away on top and spoil Donovan Mitchell's return to Utah. Hey Ben. Is it true that Evan Mobley's defensive numbers are down this season? It's funny you should ask, Mike, because I think a lot of the perception around Mobley's sophomore slump is based on noise from his on-off numbers. His impact metrics are near the bottom of the league because Cleveland has been 10 points better per 100 in the 750 minutes he's been on the bench. But a ton of this is likely just bad luck. Teams are shooting 39% from three with Mobley on the floor and 31% with him on the bench. And that 8% difference is the biggest in the entire league among any rotation player. 
that shooting difference alone is worth about 8 points per 100 on defense. And given how good he looks on film, and the fact that last season there was barely any difference in opponent shooting when he was on the floor versus when he went to the bench, this is likely just variance influencing his numbers in a smallish sample. You might be thinking, isn't the fourth quarter against the Jazz also a small sample? But Mobley's been just as good, if not slightly better, on defense this entire year. He has this incredible feel for where to position himself and then when to commit to the ball, especially in pick and roll. When a ball handler doesn't use a screen and heads in the other direction, it can leave the other defender exposed. But Mobley is already so good at staying in position and then reacting instantly to the change of direction, and he contests a floater on the move here. And every time I tune in, he regularly makes mind-bending plays for the second-ranked Cavs defense, somehow rematerializing under the hoop to save a layup on this one. And here he should be heading to the corner to follow his man, but instantly peels off as Paolo Bancaro sets up a spin move to blow up the entire thing. Right after that Jazz game, I was scouting the Grizzlies and Mobley again jumped off the screen. He showed that great sense in pick and roll of when to contain the ball and then when to release back to his original man. And he slid way over to help on this one to make John Morant look like a third grader. In the first half, Jaron Jackson Jr. powered through him with a strong left-handed finish, but in the second half when he tried it again, Mobley slid with him perfectly, took the contact, and still contested well at the rim. Now, I wouldn't be shocked in the long run to see teams get more open threes against Mobley because he'll leave mediocre shooters to prioritize paint help, but in the long run, those numbers should even out, and his defensive metrics will take off as a result. Those overall plus-minus numbers are part of many one-number metrics that make it look like he's slumping this season. His outside shooting is a concern to me, but growth isn't a linear process, and his promising traits on that end are his instinctive passing and connective tissue finishing game that fits well on high-end teams, and those moments are definitely still there. If anything, his defenses look slightly better to me this year, and his flashes of unicorn dominance in the Utah game are in line with what we'd expect from a future defensive player of the year, and along with some noisy stats, I think that's a big part of what's missing in the conversation right now about Evan Mobley. If you want more content, check out patreon.com slash thinking basketball. A lot of the stats you see in these videos come from our daily updating boards for our deluxe members. Thanks as always for watching this one all the way through. And of course, I do hope you're having a great day.